everybody. Welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. Bob Page is, well, who knows where Bob Page is. Calls at a quarter to 10. We do the show on Monday morning. Calls, a show, calls about a quarter to 10 saying there are 12 air, or 15 air, uh, airplanes ahead of his in New York. Well, even if he's, there's none ahead of him, if he's going to fly out at that time, we tape here at 1030. So in other words, Bob Page, obviously, in the bar is getting smashed or smashed or whatever. Greg Kelser is here. He's my guest today, former Michigan State and later on Piston Star. We got a lot of stories to talk about with Greg and including this latest hot rumor of Dantley for Aguirre. Dantley to be traded anywhere at about five different teams. We'll talk to Greg Kelser about that in just a few minutes. The sponsors are Al Dietrich Oldsmobile in Waterford, not Pontiac Waterford like Paige likes to say. It's on M59, which is Highland Road, right in the heart of Waterford, right by the airport out there. Cattleman's Meat Center with locations in the Eastern Market and Hamtramck, David Lee Roth and folks. TCOM Pagers, if you're a busy corporate executive like I am, you should get a pager. We'll tell you how you can contact them in a moment. Binary Computers for all your computer needs on Woodward to 12 Mile with John Waters. And we have uh, Top Hat Hamburgers, the best little burger in town where you could find Bob Page before he got the job in New York every breakfast, lunch, and dinner because that's all he could afford. We have Pass the Pro-Am Sports Systems, The Sting, The Hot Nightclub on James Cousins, The Lodge by 8 Mile there. And of course, last but definitely not least, Sports Fans Journal, it is hot and then hotter yet. 76 pages, and we got Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Greg Kelser, who's a columnist, and much more in there. All you have to do to subscribe, or if you're looking to work in some advertising, we're looking for, to bring more people involved with the magazine, just call this number 24 hours a day, 751-1818. Greg Kelser is here right now. What a, now let's jump all right into the trade. Mark Aguirre almost a piston. What would you feel? And you played against Mark Aguirre. Mark Aguirre is a fine basketball player. There's no doubt about that. But you know, the Pistons' chemistry, chemistry is intact as far as I'm concerned. It's a very, very delicate thing. And uh, we're talking about Adrian Dantley, a prolific scorer, one of the great players of all time. He's certainly going to go into the Hall of Fame. This guy was perhaps uh, uh, 30 seconds away from being the MVP of the finals last year. Detroit came that close, obviously. Uh, there were some problems. Uh, Adrian's not very happy or was not very happy with the amount of shots he was getting, but this was due to the double teaming uh, type of defenses that yeah. other teams were, were using against the Pistons, taking him out of the offense. But I think in the last two or three games, Adrian has, has come back. He's scored well. He's got the ball. And uh, he's just willing to do whatever the Pistons want from him. Uh, if it were me, I'd say keep Adrian, or Adrian around. No you wouldn't trade it. Adrian one on, <clears throat> one on one for Aguirre? Well, it, it, now that's a different that's a different question you're asking me now. See, Aguirre, the age factor comes five into years play. Younger, something like that. Four or five years younger, uh, you're gonna you're gonna have him around a little bit more than Adrian Dantley. But again, it depends on what you're trying to do. Are you thinking into the future, or are you trying to get back to the finals and perhaps win a championship this year? If that's the focal concern, the latter, then perhaps I think you keep the chemistry intact, get your people healthy. Joe Dumars is out. But the Pistons are playing very well in his absence. Uh, Vinny Johnson's uh, been playing very well. Isaiah he, seems to be coming to do a little more leader out, out there. He seems to be playing a little bit better. Well, Isaiah, he, he comes under a lot of criticism because people feel that when he's distributing the ball, the team's better. When he's shooting, the team suffers. Well, I think this year he's doing a pretty good mix of both. And everyone's asking the question, what's wrong with the Pistons? The answer is nothing. They've got to get their people healthy. That's the main thing. Uh, expectations are high. They just need to fine-tune a few things, but I think they're in good shape. And you being, of course, a broadcaster doing all the home games and all that stuff, uh, you're with this team day after day. Does it have the killer instinct? Uh, the other night, uh, uh, well, it's Sunday night, uh, of course, Michael Jordan said this is not as good a team as last year. Do you agree with that? Intensity-wise? and Well, I think Michael's perhaps talking about the Pistons now versus where they were in the playoffs. It was a very intense team in the playoffs. You're not going to see that type of uh, uh, intense effort night in, night out during the regular season. But I tell you, during the playoffs, you'll see a different uh, Detroit Pistons team. Uh, they're mentally tough, without a doubt. Uh, perhaps the only team that I can think of in recent years that, goes, that can go on the road and mentally, as well as physically, whip a team in their own arena uh, perhaps the Lakers did it well, Boston did it when they were healthy a few years ago, but the Detroit Pistons are the team that can do that on a consistent basis now. Are, are you saying the Pistons are going to win the championship this season? Well, I, I'm not saying that because I think um, a lot of things have to fall in place. We don't know if everyone's going to be healthy. 
But if that is the case and everyone is healthy, then I think they have as good a chance as any. Is there any so-called great teams in the NBA today, Greg? I don't think there's a great team out there. A lot of very good teams. Yes, I agree. Yeah. New York has made tremendous strides. And even if Boston had Larry Bird, I think that that'd be a one-two race there. Uh, New York is, is, they play very well at home. Inconsistent a bit on the road, but they do a, a fairly good job. They press the entire time, and that gives a That's lot of teams That's what I'm going to ask. I don't know how good they're going to do in the playoffs because of the fact that they press all the time, and that's going to wear you out. Toward the well, end it wears season. them down, but I've seen it wear some, some opponents down, too. Yeah, but you're only uh, playing them. You're not playing the, the same opponent every night. So you're still talking about you've got to get your, your, your act together. And, and I, think it, I think the style of play and, and the fact that they're, very, they're not a real veteran team, I, I don't look for them to be, I look for factor, but not a, a team that's going to win it this year. Well, no, maybe they won't win it, but they'll be there. And I think that in order to get to the championship, a team will probably have to go through New York, and it's going to be a tough series on whomever it, it, that team ends up uh, uh, being. Cleveland's another team. Right now, the best record in the league. Sure. Um, Brad Doherty playing great basketball. Oh, he ever. Uh, Mark Price surprising everyone. I, I didn't think he was that good, but uh, you got to take your hat off to him. And of course, Larry Nance coming over from Phoenix. Here's a guy that Lenny Wilkins really liked when Lenny was coaching out in the Western Conference uh, at Seattle. Uh, an absolute uh, golden find for him getting Nance out of Phoenix. When they made that trade last year, I thought it was a great trade for Cleveland. I said so at the time. I thought Larry Nance was a great talent, but I didn't know how he would fit in with the younger players in Cleveland. And he was a disaster toward the end of last season. He he was just lost. He didn't wasn't hustling in that. That was the wrap of uh, uh, when, when he played out west. That he just did not hustle. And he came over here, and in my opinion, did not hustle the times I saw him. But I don't know what got into him in the offseason, but he's like a man possessed this year, and he's just playing sensational. Pride. Pride can make an athlete go in Where was it last year, though, Greg? Well, no, no, no. See, like, it's, like you said, he had to adjust. And it's very difficult coming into a team uh, in the midseason trying to fit in. And that's the thing I worry about with the Detroit Pistons, if they were to make a, bo a blockbuster trade like uh, Dantley for Aguirre. How quickly will he fit in? Will it happen in time for them to be where they want to be when playoff time come. Nance was able to uh, spend the offseason working on the things that Lenny had, had outlined for him. And uh, when he came back, he had the benefit of a, of a, a preseason, a, tr uh, a training camp, to, to understand the system and what Lenny was trying to do. And it shows. Cleveland's playing great. They have three all-stars and possibly a fourth. Uh, Ron Harper's playing good basketball. Oh, Ronnie also. Harper, after a bad, no, there's another guy I thought was a disaster last year. I was really surprised. He went from a rookie that, boom, just slipped. Got hurt. And, yeah, he did, but he, even there, he didn't seem to have the intensity or anything, but this year he is really playing well. I think Cleveland needs a so-called veteran player to put him over the hump, and I just feel you don't just jump in and win the thing. I think you've got to walk before you run, and they didn't walk last year, and I think this is their walking year. Well, you know, right now, you talk about a seven-game series, and then we also talked about the, the, the intensity of the playoffs. Right now, all of that favors Detroit in the East, without a doubt, because they're experienced, they've been there, they and they know what match, it takes. Which means a lot, too. Yeah. Greg Kelser on Sports View. We'll come back to talk to the former Michigan State star, later Detroit Piston, and current broadcaster for the Pistons after this timeout. about to embark on a great crusade. The eyes of the world are upon us. Our mission, crush the enemy before they crush us. Like America, Uncle Al will come through for you, crushing prices on Oldsmobiles and GMC trucks. Say hello, America. Sayonara, imports. Tanks, but no tanks to imports. Visit Uncle Al's giant new dealership on M59 just east of the Pontiac Airport, where the runway ends, the deals begin. If you're a sports fan, you should subscribe to this magazine, Sports Fans Journal, and here's how. Our monthly columnists include Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Dick Vitale, Denny McLean, George Allen, Bob Feller, Jimmy Carson, George Blaha, Bill Gadsby, and a whole lot more. Sports Fans Journal is available at newsstands and bookstores. To subscribe, call our 24-hour hotline at 751-1818. Sports Fans Journal, a must for sports fans living anywhere in Michigan or the U.S. Call now, 751-1818. Where's the meat? 
It's right here at Cattleman's Meat Center where you can buy fresh, lean, top quality beef, pork, veal, poultry, even fish. Packing house style, save up to 40%, quality guaranteed. Where's the meat? Come inside our 3,500 square foot cooler for everyday low prices like this week, Packing House Style Standing Ribs. Cut your way free. Cattleman's Meat Center, Eastern Market Area, and Hamtramck. No limit. Save up to 40%. You said it, honey. We're back on Sports View with former Piston, Michigan State basketball player, and now current broadcaster for the team, Greg Kelser. Let's go back and talk about your Michigan State days with you and Magic Johnson, the NCAA Championship Ball Club and everything. What did that mean? Ten years ago. Greg Man, how Ten time flies. It's something. <laughs> You know, I'm really looking forward to this summer because they're having a, they're planning a big affair for the the reunion. We're having a, an entire weekend set aside. There's going to be a basketball game, which will pit the Michigan State team of '79 against all the stars since then. We're talking about Kevin Willis, Skiles, Daryl Johnson, uh, Vernon Carr. Your '79 team is going to win because Magic is still in this. So on and so forth. Oh, there's no doubt we'll win. There's no doubt we'll win. We still got Jay Vincent, Ron Charles is still playing yeah. overseas. Everyone is still active and in pretty good shape. And you're in pretty good shape, too. You play the Sports Fans Journal softball team in the summertime. I stay in shape. I try to, anyway. That meant a lot to me, though. There's no Playing question Sports about Fans it. Journal softball team? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> that means a lot to me, too, oh, if I, I can just okay. get some hits, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, winning that championship is something I'll always uh, uh, cherish. We, we did something, obviously, that uh, a lot of uh, players do not get a chance to experience and uh, feel very fortunate to have been a part of that. Should have won it two years in a row. That's one the of the all-time great college teams in your mind. I think we're right up there. I'm not going to say that um, you know we could have beat the the Walton teams of UCLA or or, or the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or Lou Alcindor teams uh, of the '60s, but we were just as good, I think, as um, as as any of the recent teams. Uh, it would be interesting if they could put a computer uh, type game together and see how yeah, well, the teams that, that would fare against each other. Yeah. yeah. And then, then, then of course, uh, Judd Heathcote gets all this criticism more from Bob Page, and then, but, but so maybe justify a little bit the, the, the fact that he doesn't recruit. Your feeling on that? Well, I've said it time and time again. The reason why Judd has problems competing with some of the other schools uh, is because he plays by the book. He makes no promises. He doesn't pay people. Uh, you come to Michigan State, you come because you want to come there. It's as simple as that. And sometimes when you're talking to a 17- or 18-year-old kid that's... Uh, been somewhat deprived throughout his life and you waive promises and dollars and this sort of thing and this is not saying that other schools cheat I'm not I'm not saying that but I'm, I'm that has been the case in, in some instances I'm sure Judd does not do that and sometimes that puts you behind the, the in the game right away the fact that that he's been in that situation and Jenison Fieldhouse we hear about Jenison Fieldhouse uh, that's it do you think that's hurt in the long run Michigan State hey, I love Jenison Fieldhouse I I thought that uh, it, it was the best place to play in the Big Ten. Obviously, everyone probably feels that about the place they play in, but it gave us a certain advantage. Mm -hmm. We had our fans right on top of the action, and uh, I hope the new place lends, that, lends to that same type of atmosphere. It's very important. I don't like those new stadiums the way they build them today. I think the old stadiums, like Olympia, and you mentioned Jonas Field, when you're right on top of the action, Le Le uh, I think these new stadiums even leave a lot to be desired, and I'm talking about the palace. Yeah. In there. The only thing I didn't like about Jenison Fieldhouse is they had this tartan surface floor, which had absolutely no give to it whatsoever. That's and I played sense. on that surface for four years, and it was into my second year in the NBA that I started having knee problems that I really had to endure throughout. And I, I think that floor perhaps had something to do with it. They changed that floor right after I left and put a wooden floor down, which is great. But uh, I like Jenison Fieldhouse, no doubt about it. Looking at Michigan, Michigan State today, the fact is they had a pretty good game the other day. Michigan State came up with a great game plan on Saturday and, and had them in the first half together. They got out rebound on 23 to 2 in the second half. How do you compare the Michigan, Michigan State teams today? And uh, what about all the criticism of, of uh, Bill Frieders that justified? Well, when you look at the talent that Frieders had at Michigan and the fact that he hasn't won a championship or, or hasn't made the Final Four in recent years, uh, I guess you can understand where the criticism is coming from, but I think that, I think that Frieder's a good coach. I, I really do. Uh, um, Judd, uh, as far as Judd is concerned, I think he's I think he's a great coach because the job he did in 1985 with the Scott Skiles led team. Oh, I mean, this was a team that was picked to finish ninth, and they ended up contending for the championship. And I think that had they got by Kansas, you remember the shot clock and all this stuff. Yeah, sure, I do. Had they got by Kansas, I think they would have made the Final Four, and who knows what would have happened. Certainly, though, they went farther than 
they were ever supposed to go. And this is certainly uh, uh, because of Judd's coaching attributes. And the recruiting's picking up a little bit. He's got some pretty good players next year, uh, next couple years. Could Michigan State possibly be on top in your mind? I think so. I look for them too, and I'd be very surprised if they weren't, uh, if they're not. I think if they had the big fella, uh, Peplowski, playing now, you talk about the 23 to 2 rebounding disadvantage. Well, they wouldn't have that. Yeah. yeah, this guy can rebound, takes up a lot of space in there, and uh, certainly getting him healthy and getting him back next year is going to be a big, big plus for the Spartans. Who's going to win the NCAA championship this year? Nobody wants to be number one. <laughs> Tell this me, is it's ridiculous. Not, it's not a good place to be right now. I remember back when we became number one in, in 79, we, we were there, and all of a sudden we started playing uh, tentative, playing not to lose. You've heard that phrase. Oh, sure I have. And, and, and you, cannot, you not, cannot play that way. And I think that's what's happening to the teams now. You get on that number one spot, you want to keep it, and your game changes. And, and that's why the teams, I think, uh, right now cannot stay there. It's not a very safe place to be right now. Who is the best team in the land in your mind? I like Oklahoma. I like Illinois. And uh, Georgetown. I, I really like them with the freshman. Uh, what's his name? Uh, is it uh, Morning? Oh, yeah. Alonzo Morning. Oh, yeah. Alonzo Morning. Yeah. yeah, I saw him the other day on TV. He really looked yeah. good. The, who's your pick to win it all? Well, right now I'm going to go with the Big Ten, Illinois. Uh, fighting a line. Oh, Bob Page can't stand Lou Henson. He said he'll never, he never wins the big ones and all that stuff. <laughs> I think he can this year. That's my early pick. Could change by March, though. Okay. Greg Kelser, former Michigan State star, later on, number one draft pick, played in the NBA for a few teams, and now currently broadcaster and sports fans journal columnist. We'll continue with him after this timeout. I'm sorry, she's out of the office for the day and there's no way to contact her. With a pager from TCOM, you could contact her anytime. I know it's an emergency, but it's out of the building now. May I call you later? With Motorola pagers from TCOM, you can deal with emergencies now. I'm sorry, our delivery man is on call right now. We won't be able to help you till tomorrow. Hi, my name is Fred Wetzel with TCOM Paging. If these problems seem familiar to you, then you need a TCOM pager. You'd be surprised how affordable they are. You probably wonder how you've done without one. Give us a call at 559-6826. Binary Computers is celebrating their ninth anniversary and how they've become one of Detroit's top independent computer dealers is really simple. A great selection of brand name computer products, outstanding service, and highly knowledgeable trained consultants who make things understandable in plain English. Binary now has facsimile machines and telephone systems, so stop in for special anniversary savings at Binary Computers, Metro Detroit's business computer center, Woodward at 12 Mile, Berkeley. Remember, if you haven't got a computer, you'd better get one before your competitor does. It's time to eat and I'm so hungry now My stomach's turning upside down Day or night when I want a bite I want the best little burger in town French fries, onion chips, creamy chocolate shakes Baby, they're so hard to refuse For dinner or lunch, there's a lot too much And for breakfast, you just can't lose We're back on Sports View with Greg Kelser, Sports Fans Journal columnist. Uh, enjoy that. You enjoy writing for that, don't you? Yeah, we have a lot of fun with that. Greg. Yeah, my article appears in here just about, uh, well, every time the, article, the book comes out. Every month. And this month it's on page 18. <laughs> and enjoy. you're writing about pro football. Well, I, I write about everything. See, that's it. I like to be versatile. Uh, every now and then I'll have a basketball article in there, but I've talked about boxing. Yes, you have. I've talked about uh, Detroit sports fans. I've talked about basketball, of course, football, a little bit of everything. You know what you do? One, great time, one time write one of those tidbit things. Those are great. Just get a whole bunch of thoughts down and just write a little bit on each one. Those are fine, too. I'll do that, too, but you've got to get this magazine. Yes. Great stuff. Great stuff. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> A lot of fun, huh? Paige would be uh, rolling his grave right now if he's in the grave, wherever he is. <laughs> oh, I can hear that. Our, our director, Kenny Taylor, who's not what you call a, a sports expert, wants to subscribe. So when that guy subscribes, you know, you know something's going well. Greg, the fact that you were drafted number one by the Pistons, uh, three number one draft picks that year under Dick Vitale, and... Uh, and one's still playing. <laughs> one is still playing, yeah. Phil Hubbard, of course. Right. And Phil Hubbard, is, there's a little story about that one, too. Uh, and then, and then you played a few years in the NBA, but then you became a free agent. Did you price yourself out of the market? Is that why you're not playing today? 
Well, I didn't really price myself out of the market. I was just asking for, for, for fair uh, uh, compensation for, for the job that I had done coming off my fifth year in the league with the Clippers. I, I had uh, averaged uh, 11 points a game, about five rebounds, coming off the bench, playing about 22 minutes a game, which was, I felt pretty good. And I played that season under a great deal of pressure uh, out in California. My dad was back here uh, suffering with lung cancer at the time. And uh, it was very, very difficult to concentrate, but I stayed and I, I worked as hard as I possibly could. And then when the season, the off season came, uh, they did not really, they never gave me a fair contract offer. So I held out. And um, you wish you'd have signed now. I never, I, I try not to ever uh, regret things that I did. The decision I, I, I uh, came to the, at that time was based on that period of time. I felt it was the right thing to do. I have no regrets because basketball, Ron, I played it for 18 years on, a, on an organized level. Uh, and, and, and it opened a lot of doors for me, got me a free education, which I'm very thankful for. I met a lot of great people, including yourself and Mr. Absent here. <laughs> and um, I have no regrets. I have no bitter feelings about anything. And now I'm enjoying the broadcasting end of it, working with George Blaha with the Pistons. Now, how uh, is it working with George? George is great. You know, I've, I've been very, very fortunate to share the booth with some very fine play-by-play -play people. I'm talking about George Blaha, um, Charlie Neal at BET, uh, worked with a guy named Wayne Larravee. Are you uh, working with, was, you're doing some work with Charlie now? Yes, I, I, I've been working with BET for four years now, doing the black college uh, basketball games. Had an opportunity to work with James Brown of CBS when he was with BET. Oh, so yeah. The, all these people have helped me advance in the field. I really enjoy it. feel very, very fortunate. And what are you doing now? Of course, you're playing softball with, with F, SFJ. <laughs> See that? The good PR man here. I should hire this guy. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I'm writing uh, the column for Sports Fans Journal, doing basketball uh, telecasts for the uh, Detroit Pistons, also doing the work for uh, Black Entertainment Television. Did a game just a few nights ago in, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Southern University in Alcorn State. Got one coming up this weekend at uh, South Carolina State. So I stay busy, uh, especially this time of the year, and uh, just having a great time. What about the future for Greg Kelser? What do you want to do as far as... Uh uh, do you want to get back into basketball in some area or something like that as far as like the coaching aspect? Well, a lot of people tell me that I should probably go into coaching. Uh, they hear my, my opinions on the radio and on television regarding basketball and this sort of thing, and they think that I would probably make a good coach, but I've never had any desire to coach. I'd, and, and unless that changes, then I would probably want to stay in the, in the broadcasting end of it. I really enjoy television. And uh, my career right now in broadcasting is heading in the direction I'd hoped for when I started four years ago and the opportunities continue to expand with each year and I just hope that that, 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 that process continues. Okay, Greg Kelser on uh, Sports View and we're going to come back talk more about the Pistons and their chances of winning the NBA championship, what it's going to take for them to do that with Greg Kelser, former Michigan State Pistons star and now current broadcaster of the Pistons after this. I know. game. The NBA returns to pass this fall as the Detroit Pistons begin a whole new era of excitement. After a breathtaking trip to the NBA Finals, Chuck Daly's squad is looking to bring a world championship to their new home at the Palace. So make plans now on joining Fred McLeod and Tom Wilson for our fifth season of sensational coverage as Detroit strives to defeat the league's elite on Michigan's cable network of champions. Pass. That was me. John Rouser, not too many years ago, as a defensive back with the Pittsburgh Steelers, after my playing career at the University of Michigan had ended. Now I'm proud to be co-owner of the Sting, Detroit's most dynamic nightclub. We've got continuous live DJs, continuous videos, and live entertainment every weekend. But you don't have to disco. The Sting is also a great after work place to meet other professional people who frequent our lounge. So stop in and see us at the Sting. We're in the old Playboy Club, the lodge at Greenfield, with plenty of lighted, secured parking. May I help you? Yeah! I want some good for oh, my heart. Your heart? Yeah! And keep it light and lean for a healthy heart. What do you know what I mean? How about pasta with fruit? That's great! For a healthy heart. Eating the right foods can help keep your heart healthy. The American Heart Association, we're fighting for your life. 
If you're a sports fan, you should subscribe to this magazine, Sports Fans Journal, and here's how. Our monthly columnists include Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Dick Vitale, Denny McLean, George Allen, Bob Feller, Jimmy Carson, George Blaha, Bill Gadsby, and a whole lot more. Sports Fans Journal is available at newsstands and bookstores. To subscribe, call our 24-hour hotline at 751-1818. Sports Fans Journal, a must for sports fans living anywhere in Michigan or the U.S. Call now, 751-1818. We're closing it out on Sports View with former Piston and University of Michigan or Michigan State University star. Don't want to put you in Michigan. You don't want to go there, do you? No, it's too <laughs> Greg Kelser is here. Greg, let's talk now about the Pistons and you feel what it's what's it going to take for the Pistons to win the championship this season? Well, I think number one, they've got to have everyone healthy, as I said before. Uh, work out their iron out their little problems uh, offensively. They've got to get a little bit more scoring, but defense is the keystone for this team, and uh, I, I think that if they can get that, that intensity back to where it was in the playoffs last year and play the strong team defense, I think they'll, be, they'll have an excellent chance. Who do you look to be the main contenders this season in the playoffs? Well, from the West, I think you have to uh, consider the, the Lakers first. They've been in the finals seven out of the last nine years. Jabari's dragging them down a little bit, though. He's he? dragging, but this is a team that's got the third best record in the league right now. They're playing pretty good basketball again. You have to consider them. And then, of course, if they're not there, then I would probably expect Seattle. Because, over uh, Utah? Over Utah, yeah. Seattle over Utah. Seattle's playing very good basketball. Bernie Bickerstaff has done a great job yes, with has. them. And uh, my dark horse would not be Utah, but it would be perhaps Phoenix. Interesting. Okay. And the East? Well, uh, again, New York, uh, Cleveland, and uh, certainly can't forget the Atlanta Hawks, although I think that their biggest deficiency right now is the willingness to play team ball. They don't move the ball a lot. Uh, they have a lot of fine offensive players that tend to try and break down double teams by themselves and that gets them into trouble, especially when they play the Pistons. But again, if they're willing to uh, move the ball around and, and, and sacrifice a little bit, I think that they'll be okay. Unlike most years, this is not a sure Boston Lakers or anything like that. You've got a lot of surprising teams. It could be more interesting this year than probably any other year in the playoffs in many years. You better believe it. I'm looking forward to it, too. Okay, thanks, Greg. Our sponsors on the program today, Al Dietrich Oldsmobile in Waterford on M59, Cattleman's Meat Center with locations in the, well, we got the Eastern Market and Hamtramck, TCOM Pagers, Binary Computers on Woodward at 12 Mile with John Waters and the folks, Top at Hamburgers, Pass Pro-Am Sports Systems, the Sting Hot Nightclub on James Cousins at the Lodge in Greenfield there. Sports Fans Journal is going strong. We'd like to have you as one of the subscribers, and all you have to do just dial this number 24 hours a day. Also, if you're looking for work in advertising, give a call 24 hours a day, 751-1818. Oh, my PR <laughs> man, Greg Kelsey. Thanks a lot. Who knows if Bob Page will get off his booze and he'll be on the program next week. I have no idea. But until then, we'll talk to you in another edition of Sports View. Bye-bye, everybody.